Hey everyone! Last presentation, we have been speaking about this population of orcas in Norway. But we know that the orcas, they are worldwide predators and we can find orcas in every ocean in the world. So let's go in the other places in the world and see if the orcas are eating also herrings or other prey. But first of all, just check where the orcas are living, in which sea we can find orcas. In this map, you can see in the deep blue the places where we can find orcas. So we have these locations such as Alaska, west coast of America, South America, Antarctica, west coast of Africa, Norway, Greenland, Kamchatka, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa. But there are places in the world, some oceans, there is no reports of orcas or very few. And this region, they are in a light blue. So I was wondering why, because there is fish everywhere, there is prey everywhere, why we cannot find orcas every, everywhere in the same level. And then one day, working on the food chain, I find this picture showing the bloom of a plankton in the ocean in summer times. And then it was clear that it was the same picture, that the orcas, they are apex predators in ecosystem. And you have in the deep blue, some places where there are sea and ocean, very, very poor in phytoplankton. To have a big, big top predator such as orca, you need to have a very rich ecosystem. And what gives the energy is the first level, which is made of phytoplankton, diatoms, dinoflagellates, cyanobacteria. You have a food chain and you can see that between each level there is a loss of energy, there is a 10% coefficient efficiency. So the more level you have, the less place there is for a big animal such as orcas. The more phytoplankton we have, the more energy there is for the last level. This is the reason why in some places in the world which are known to be poor in plankton, the apex predator is sharks or tuna but not orcas and not big whales. Predation is something very important to keep the biodiversity on Earth. For instance, uh, let's take an example with this graph with a population of any species of any level of the food chain. Of course, all these species, they will not be in the same number. And because of the conditions, some are more adapted to the environment. Maybe some will be even extremely adapted compared to others. So you will see among the 18 species, you're gonna have one, two, three species blooming and taking all the food. And what happened in this condition is that the other species, they go down they decrease and sometimes they collapse and at the end the system will end with only one species surviving. So we can imagine a world with only one species, one species of phytoplankton, one species of uh, copepod, one species of grass. But the thing is that this species is adapted with condition in the time and we know that on earth condition has changed because of the environment, it can be the temperature heat or freezing, it can be the sun, it can be the light, it can be the salinity, it can be the, the acidity. All of these are the conditions that are the, the species are living in. And if there is one species surviving, if these conditions are changing and this species is not adapted anymore to the new condition, it's gonna be the end of life on Earth. This is why we have predation, because in our system of food chain, uh, there is a level above. And in this level above, you're gonna have one predator put pressure on this PC and will push down the population of this PC in a level permitting the other species to keep alive. This is why it's important to protect the apex predator such as sharks, tuna or orcas because they are the key of the biodiversity of our oceans. Actually, the food chain with an apex predator such as the shark in this graph is more a web. And there is interconnection, interaction between each level. The apex predator is the key of the biodiversity, but the question is who is regulating the population of the apex predator, such as orga, for, for instance. 
Actually, the Apex Predator, they have a system inside and um, this system permit them to auto-regulate their own population in order to keep this system balanced. So let's go back to Norway, where the orcas are eating the herrings. When you are a herring, swimming in the middle of the school of herrings, you have herrings, herrings, herring stop, herrings, herrings behind, herrings in front. You see only herrings, you're fine, you don't move. But when you are a herring, at the edge, at the side of the bait ball, in the open part, you will see orcas. So in your mind of herrings, it's not good. You go inside to protect yourself. And these the orcas, they know it very well. This is the reason why they are putting pressure in the side, because they know that the herrings, they all want to go inside to feel secure. And when the bait ball is very tight at the surface, they, they slap the bait ball, and instead of stunning one, two or three fish, they stun tens and tens of fish in the same tail slap. They know the weak point, they know how to use it. The orcas eat fish, but they also eat top predators such as sharks. The orcas, they know also the weak point of the shark. They know that if they take the shark and they put him upside down, the shark will sleep. They call that tonic immobility and the shark will suffocate because the shark need a motion, need some speed in order to breathe. Otherwise, if the shark is staying still, he's suffocating. So they wait until the shark is dead and they can open him and eat the liver. Same family than the shark is the stingray in New Zealand. And the system is the same. When the stingray is hidden in a cave, it's quite dangerous for orcas. But when the stingray is swimming in open sea, then the orca can taste slap the stingray, catch the stingray, turn upside down, make the stingray sleeping, and then the orca can eat the stingray. Most of the time, it's only a part of the stingray and the liver. Actually, the liver of the stingray, the liver of the shark, is the richest part and the most energetic part of the body. The rest is just water and protein, which provides no energy, so they eat only what they need. The stingray, they are not defenseless. An orca has been found dead with a stingovery inside the brain. This is why eating the stingray is uh, quite dangerous for orcas, and they had to use this technique in order to eat them in almost safety. Orcas can also be spotted while hunting marine mammals, such as sea lions. And the first thing he will do is crush as much as he can and shock by shaking the prey on the beach. And it's nothing to see with cruelty. Actually, the first reflex of a pup of sea lion when he's caught by an orca or a shark is to turn and to bite. So to avoid to be bitten, they will shake and shock the prey immediately and put the prey in open sea and play with the prey like a cat, play with a mouse with a taste slap and um, throw in the air a couple of tens of meters away and then they will eat the prey. Let's go in Antarctica where the orcas there are eating the crab eater seals. The crab eater seals they use to lay down and to take the sun in ice pack pieces. And the orcas, they know that. They first have to spot the crab eater seal in the pack ice. For that, they are spy hoping and they are checking on the top of each ice pack. When they spot one, they use to gather and to make a wave in order to wash the surface of the ice pack with a wave made by the tail. And this wave, they calculate, that's why also they are spy hoping, this wave um, come from the side and hit the side of the, of the crab eater seals in order to make him roll away from the ice pack. Then the seal is in the ocean, is not in shelter anymore. They know the weak point, they know how to do it, and they have invented this amazing technique to wash the surface of the ice pack and to make the seal roll in the water. And they are patient, they are waiting until he's exhausted, until they can catch him and eat him. Dolphins, they are amazing swimmers, they are amazing skill, and I cannot imagine uh, a predator capable to catch a dolphin. But the orca, 
can do that. They also understand the wing point of the dolphins. When the dolphins are swimming, they use the echolocation and the orcas can be spotted before they attacked and the dolphin, they can escape. To avoid that, the orcas, they will put this bunch of dolphins in panic. They will put pressure on the dolphins by swimming below them. And when the dolphins are rushing at the surface, it's thousands of dolphins rushing in the same time in full speed. And it's so noisy that the dolphin, they cannot use the echolocation so they cannot know where the orca will attack from. So the orca, which is a faster swimmer than dolphin, can just come from below and target one dolphin and punch him with the nose and break every bones, organs, and kill him like this. It's amazing to see, but uh, again, the orcas, they know the weak point and they know how to do it. Even more impressive is this video of the false orcas. False orcas can reach five meters long, maybe six meters for the big males. And in this video, we can see a mother orca, a female orca, swimming and punching a mother and a calf of false orcas. They are full speed and still the kill whale can catch one like this. It's totally amazing to see that. I, I couldn't believe this footage when I saw that. Alongside the west coast of America is migrating the gray whale from the nursing ground close to the equator up to the feeding ground uh, in Alaska. And the transient orca, they are following this migration and they are chasing the baby, the calf of the gray whale. It's also an amazing, amazing hunting situation to see the pod of orca splitting in two parts. A part of the pod is pushing the mother away from the calf. The second part is droning the calf, and they push the calf below the surface by putting the, the jaw on the top of the calf and putting all the tons, the matriarch of orcas is maybe three, four tons, and to push down the calf in order to make him suffocate and to drone him. The orcas will eat the low jaw and the tongue and they will leave the rest of the carcass. It's a bit sad, but so is nature. The population is apex predator and is of course keeping the biodiversity and using the, um, all the animals in a, uh, as a prey. If we remember each population of orcas in a part of the world, they have a main prey. But if we think in terms of the orcas all around the world, we can see one thing, they have a very wide diet range. They can eat all the delphinidae. All the dolphins, except the pilot whales, have no report of orcas' predation on the pilot whales because they are almost as big as orcas and they are really, really tough. They can eat all the seals, even the leopard seals in Antarctica is in the menu. They can eat all the large whales, even the blue whales, the biggest animal on Earth ever, is also a prey for the orcas. They eat all tunas, they eat all penguins, they eat all sharks, from the smallest to the biggest, turtles, squids, fish, salmon, mackerel, of a kind of fish. They eat all the big animals they can find in the sea. But there is one animal they can catch easily, available in the sea, human being. We are taking bath in the beach. We are snorkeling and scuba diving a little bit everywhere in the sea. There is a lot of situation when the orcas can meet and have a close encounter. And still, so far, there is no report of attack from orcas on the human being. It's a kind of amazing because we are so vulnerable when we are in the water, we could be easy prey. Some top predators such as the white shark or the tiger sharks, sometimes they attack humans and the orcas don't do that. I was wondering what can be the reason why? In nature, there is many, many rules and all the rules, they have exception all the time, except this one, the orcas, they don't attack humans. And they have never done, we have no report about that. It must be a reason for that because it's a really amazing phenomenon. Some people say that it's because they know that humans are intelligent. Okay, maybe. Some people say that they know that people can be dangerous and they want to live in peace with the human being because uh, we can revenge. Yeah, it's true today, but 500 years ago, we were, we were not that dangerous for the orcas. They could easily catch some native people living close to them, and they didn't. In North America, for example, in British Columbia, the orca is kind of God for some uh, native population. They have a lot of respect for the orcas, a lot of stories of orcas, and a great connection. There is a reason why, and I still don't know what can be the reason. Each time I have one reason, I'm not satisfied 100%. 
still, what we can keep from this presentation is what all of this hunting strategy have in common and what we can compare from one population to the other population. First, the skills. The unique body performance of orcas when they are chasing. They are great swimmer, they are great divers, they are movable, they have amazing stamina. Second is the intelligence. They know the weak point of each prey and they know how to use it perfectly in order to catch the prey easily, safely. And last but not least is the perfect organization between members of the group. In the orca system, the unit is not the individual. One orca is an amazing animal, strong, with stamina, intelligent, everything, but they put everything in common and they put all the individual work in common. And the group organization is so efficient that they are apex predators everywhere they are, and they have no predators above them. And this organization, this cooperation, is thanks to a unique communication system. All your experience, all your footage, all your pictures of interaction uh, are helpful. You can contribute and become contributors of our Facebook page called UC Orcs Sans Frontières. You can ask for being a UC ambassador and it's going to be a great honor for us to include you in our staff of ambassadors. If you organize some events, seminars, workshops, works about the orca behavior or also the uh, how to come close with orcas, we're going to be uh, really happy to take part of it or any other suggestion you may have. Thank you everyone for your attention. This was Orcas, Worldwide Predators. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.